Right, so as a wrasse fishing guide, um, if you're targeting large wrasse, uh, crab baits are the, are the best to use. Um, hardbacks, you um, can use peeler crab with the cotton wrap around them. I'd say a size 2 to 4 hook. I'd say preferably about 2 0 would be just right. Just nick it through a hardback crab and, and use that. Um, fishing, you can um, ledger. Um, tight onto the bottom um, with your hardback crab. Um, I've prefer preferred to float fish it. You can use lugworm, ragworm, stuff like that. You generally get smaller fish, but the, the hardbacks will um, sort out the better fish. Um, so generally, I mean, around um, Ireland and, and the UK, Ireland's got some fabulous uh, wrasse fishing. Um, doesn't matter where you go. Um, I think the Dingle Peninsula had a, had the record there for a while, um, but anywhere anywhere on the sort of the southwest frontier of there is really extremely good for rash. But you can get them in the you know in um, in England as well, down south, southwest Wales and places like that. Um, so with regards to um, the um, the big balance. I mean, obviously, when, when they hook, they do sort of dive for cover, and they are a bit of dirty fighters. But if you were using sort of like a, um, something a bit like a, a pike rod, or um, a one or three ounce any fish anywhere rod, which has got a good sort of tip, about 12 foot, something like that, that's going to sort of give you a bit of a sort of a head start when they start playing those sort of tactics. Um, so, yeah, I mean, with regards to um, yeah, so we briefly spoke about sort of um, sort of the rods. Um, they're talking about sort of a, a, a generally a sort of a, a short sort of hook length of sort of you probably want twenty to thirty pound amnesia trace to your hook, a swivel, um, then you have a, a bead, and then you have a lead, um, maybe like an ounce or half ounce, something like that, and then you have a float. To a stop knot and you can sort of fish it like that bouncing up and down in, in the swell just off the kelp you can lure fish for them as well you can sort of do all that um it's um they generally pick off the, the smaller fish you can use what we call like a texas rig where it's like a worm hook which is actually inside the jelly worm and a small lead head and that's good for sort of working just off the top of the kelp remember these areas where the rats are especially island extremely snaggy so float fishing is, is, is the best way um, if you're using sort of a peeler crab, you can use cotton to to, um, to tie that on. But generally, your best wrasse fishing marks are going to be where the deep water rock marks that don't really dry, dry out at low water. So they're the ideal locations to find to find the wrasse. Um, so yeah, there is um, to what I was to sort of say about it really, um, other than um, yeah, collect your sort of your bait before you go. Um, you probably want about 40 or 50 hardback crabs, probably about the size of a sort of a, um, a pound coin, two pound coin, something like that. Um, have plenty of floats. Um, you know, you could probably bring two rolls, have, have one sort of rigged up for sort of a lure, sort of um, weedless sort of um, technique. Um, and they are, they are extremely sort of good, um, sort of exciting fish to catch. They're beautiful to look at. Um, yeah, and I, the state of the tide and which to target them. I would, in Ireland, um, I would say an incoming tide was probably the best. But like I say, if, if you're fishing an area where it doesn't really dry out that much, you've got deep water all the time, it doesn't really matter too much. You might find that there'll be, if you were there all day, fishing all stages of the tide, you'd obviously be able to pick out what would be the best period. You'd go for a, like a silly spell, where they're going absolutely berserk, especially in Ireland. Um, but I would say it's probably as, as, as the top half of the income top. That would be my sort of preferred. Yeah, so two to four O hooks. Um, main line, get away with like 15 pounds, 15 to 20 pounds, something like that, mono. Um, obviously with braid and rocks don't really go well that well together. It's good to use. However, Braid have a, has a tendency to really get sort of hooked on a on a um, on a bit of rock. It's where the mono would get hooked up as well, but you'd be able to flick it off. That's where the braid you wouldn't. You'd have to physically go up to it and pull it off. Do you know, especially with some barbels on it or something like that. 
So, um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's not much to um, to the to the rest. I mean, obviously, fish quite close to the actual um, the side of the rocks. Don't fish too far out. Although saying that, if your bait is tight to the kelp, they'll be there as well. But I've generally found the best fish is quite t close in in the deep water over the kelp. They like um, the cover of the rock, and that, that the rock is where they're feeding. They're feeding on the the mussels and the you know the um, the limpets and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, so I mean, you know, if you've got any other questions about the race, and that's generally yeah. Some people use heavier gear; they might use a beach cast to do it, but I think that's a bit excessive. Um, like I say, about twelve foot. Um, you could get away with it with a nine or ten foot spin rod, um, but you don't want to bring too fancy gear down to the rocks because you don't want to bugger your gear up. Um, so really, your old clapped out pike fishing rod would probably be ideal. I would say. Um, you know, and float fishing with your, your hardbacks. All right, then, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, and I will see you later.